Well, Justin, thank you very much. We have a great neighbor in Canada, and Justin is doing a spectacular job in Canada. Everybody loves him, and they love him for a reason. So congratulations on the job you're doing. Make Van Life great again. JustinCredible.tv So here's a question I get, and I get it quite often, actually. This is from um, Mirko. I hope I pronounced that right. M-Y-R-K-O. And he says, or she, I'm not sure, my apologies, or whatever you identify as these days. <laughs> Hi, Justin. I've been watching your channel for a few years now, and I love your way of living and your personality. I was wondering if I could ask a personal question. Approximately, how much do you spend when you purchase a new rig? I don't need to know the exact amount. For example, the latest Dodge you purchased. How much was that before all the modifications? You don't have to tell me the exact amount. If it's none of my business, it's okay. You don't have to answer. In the hope of meet you one day, I am from Quebec, but I have been living in Hope, BC for 17 years. You are always welcome to come park in my yard if you're, you are in Hope one day. Um... I love that French to English uh, translation in emails. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, anyways, I get this question all the time. And the reason I don't answer it is, well, number one, I don't think the internet needs to know people's personal finances or how much they spend for a rig. I know a lot of people talk about it, but I just choose not to. I don't think it's anyone's business. Um, second of all, it doesn't really make sense to, because if I tell you uh, the price of a vehicle that I buy here, that may have no relevance to where you live, uh, especially if you're in a different country. Even if you're in a different part of the country, even city to city, the markets are different, so the prices of things are different. So, I mean, we spend, uh, right now, gasoline is $1.30 a liter here. And I know way over on the other side of the country, in Ontario, it's like 90, 95 cents a liter, or maybe a dollar a liter. There's a big difference uh, in, the, in the market prices there. And the same goes for everything, including vehicles. Also, if you're in a different country, let's say you're in the United States, and I say I spent $30,000 on this van. Well, in U.S. dollars, that's very different. And in different markets in the U.S., it's also very different, like, you know, depending on where you are. So I don't really talk about it much because it just, it'll, it'll, it confuses a lot of people. Some people will be like, wow, that's cheap. Other people will be like, wow, that's expensive. That just depends on where you are. I can give ballparks. And even though there's no official blue book for a vehicle like this, well, there are. There are guides online. You can see what a vehicle, you know, uh, suggested price should be, uh, year and model and all that. But the thing is with custom RVs is there's no blue book for it. It's worth whatever someone is willing to pay for it. I have never sold a vehicle at a loss aside from time that I put into them. Uh, I've always uh, sold my RVs and made a little bit of, a little bit of extra money for myself and then bought another RV. In a way that's different than a car because with cars uh, generally their value just goes down, depreciates. But with a custom RV you can immensely raise the value of it and that's what I've done over and over. And I don't usually plan to sell RVs. Sometimes I'll be like, okay it's time for a new project so I'll put it up for sale like I did with the last one on, on YouTube. But for the most part I sell them just when somebody makes me an offer I can't refuse, and I'm spontaneous like that. Uh, I have plans for this to keep me busy for months and months and months. Uh, but that doesn't mean I might not wake up tomorrow on the market looking for a new RV because someone offered me money for this and I just decided to sell it. I will do it. I am like that. I'm spontaneous. I've done it before. When I never had any plans to sell the van, I go to sleep and the next day I sell it. You never know what life is going to throw at you, right? I will tell you what a ballpark would be though for something like this uh, it's very different from a, a, a classic or a retro RV like say 60s 70s to something more modern from the late 90s early 2000s which is usually where I, I tend to stick around I don't like getting much newer than the early 2000s because then it gets into all the computerized crap and I don't like the newer Euro vans either as everyone knows on my channel um, I much prefer to stay around the year 2000 or below um, but I consider something from the year 2000 to be, in RV terms, very new and modern. So that's about the upper limit that I will buy an RV is around the year 2000-ish. But 
that being said, uh, something like the one I have now, uh, a late 90s, early to, or mid to late 90s Dodge Islander uh, RV, uh, well, you, you know, you're, gonna, you're looking at anywhere around 20 grand to 35 grand, depending on condition and uh, how many kilometers it has on it. Uh, it can make a big difference, and the time of year. If you buy it in the middle of winter, it's going to be a lot cheaper than if you buy it in the middle of summer. That's just the way it is with RVs. Um, and that's stock, though. That's stock. If you buy one that's been all modded out, it has solar panels, all the lighting's been changed, or it has a new paint job or whatever, it's going to probably cost a lot more. Uh, and that's the way it is. Uh, like my, my last RV and the RV before that, they were unrecognizable from the day I bought them to the day I sold them. They were completely transformed. Suddenly, they have a much higher market value. And uh, again, whatever someone's willing to pay for it. Now, I've had a few offers on this already, and I haven't even really begun doing anything on the inside yet. Uh, just from the outside appearance, people are offering me money for this, much more than I paid for it. So, uh, you know, that's the best I can tell you. I can't say, oh, well, this motorhome is going to cost you exactly this much on the open market because, well, it, it's not like a Honda Civic where there's 10,000 to choose from. There may be only one in all of North America like this. So um, it, it's, not, it's not exactly easy to pin down an exact price for it. I'll tell you this though, I will never sell it at a loss. I will, I will only sell it if it's worth my while. That I made my money back plus some and then I'll go buy another one. So to answer your question directly, it was somewhere between twenty and 35,000. There you go. That's what you're looking at for something like this. And it, it doesn't have to be an Islander. It can be any other Class B RV manufacturer out there. They're all roughly around the same uh, price ranges for the same era. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a, an Islander or a uh, Pleasure Way or a Road Track or, a, you know, there, there's 100 manufacturers out there. So it's hard to say, man. Just you're just going to have to check your classifieds and, and check the prices on them and then do some searching online and see if you can find better deals. But remember, if you see a price that's totally different on the other side of the country or in another country, do the conversion, uh, first of all, and also check the market. If the one that's cheaper is in a, is in a market where it's there's a lot more competition and there's lots more people and lots more RV dealers, of course it's going to be a little cheaper there than where you live. But then you have to take shipping into account if you want to ship it to you or you want to fly down and buy it and, and drive it home. So, you know, there's lots of factors out there. So, yeah, it's not like shopping for a car where you can just go to any dealer. So, definitely, uh, it's a buyer's market out there. Warning! Just Incredible TV is not gluten-free. Just a man with a van and a cam. Oh, keep on rocking in the free world. <laughs> Click that subscribe button below and make van life great again. Then check out Just Incredible social media and buy some kick-ass stickers at rv.live. Oh yeah, cat not included.